Well, hey guys, in my last celebrity response video to Natalie Portman claiming that going vegan gave her great skin, y'all requested that I respond to Halle Berry's claim that her ketogenic lifestyle is what is responsible for her good looking skin. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And if you like celebrity response videos, I have several, so I'll link some of them down below in the description box. <laughs> Halle Berry is, I think, 55. And so she she credits her ketogenic lifestyle to having an anti-aging effect. Look at Sorry. this. You got to talk to us about this. So, so, so what do you do? Yeah, what's the workout regime? What do you eat? Come on. I, I got to. OK, you want me to tell you? <laughs> yes. What secrets? I swear by the ketogenic diet. What is that? It's a diet simple. It's just no sugar and no carbs. And what you force your body to do is instead of burning sugar for fuel, you start burning healthy fats like avocado, coconut oil. I've been following the keto or ketogenic diet, a very low carb food plan that actually forces your body to burn fat like crazy. I also believe it's been largely responsible for slowing down my aging process. All right, what is a ketogenic diet? What is she talking about? A ketogenic diet is one in which the macronutrient profile is high fat, very low carbohydrate, and low to moderate protein levels. And this way of eating puts you in a ketogenic state, a metabolic state. You're relying on free fatty acids generated through something called beta oxidation as your primary metabolite for cellular energy. So driving all the processes in your body leading to a lower overall level of something called insulin and insulin-like growth factor. These are hormones. This way of eating and this diet is particularly compelling for those who deal with problems with insulin and insulin resistance, like diabetics, namely. Um, so is it beneficial for the skin? Honestly, there are no robust trials looking at instituting a ketogenic diet for the improvement of any particular skin condition, but it is pretty compelling. By lowering insulin and insulin-like growth factor, you can imagine how being on a ketogenic diet and in a ketogenic metabolic state would improve acne. Why is that? Well, when you lower insulin and insulin-like growth factor, Downstream of that, you're also gonna lower total androgen levels. Androgens, those are the male hormones that we all have, and they play a role in acne, specifically right at the oil gland, they lead to an increase in oil production that clogs the pore. When you lower insulin and insulin-like growth factor, you also increase activity of something called retinoid X receptor, and that's gonna help in skin cell turnover within the pore, reducing pore clogging. And a ketogenic diet and being in a ketogenic state may have some anti-inflammatory effects as well. Acne is an inflammatory skin condition. So given these alterations and hormones and potentially an anti-inflammatory effect, it does make sense that people might appreciate an improvement in their acne on a ketogenic diet when in a ketogenic metabolic state. <clears throat> and I say that because it takes some time to get there and you can't just eat keto <laughs> five or six days a week, and then eat whatever you want on the other day. The keto diet is the most rapidly effective dietary strategy for lowering insulin, lowering insulin-like growth factor, and lowering androgen. So it makes sense that it might help a variety of hormonally driven skin issues. I already talked about acne, but you also have hydradenitis suppurativa, not to mention all of the skin complications that come with being insulin resistant, and we're having diabetes. Halle Berry did or does have diabetes. It's not clear which type. If you're not aware, there are two types of diabetes, type one and type two. Type one is an autoimmune disease that presents in chi early, early childhood, whereas type two is acquired in, in type one, your body doesn't make insulin. Whereas in type two, your body becomes resistant to insulin because you're chronically pumping out so much of it as a result of dietary and lifestyle choices. Having diabetes, whether it be type one or type two, affects the skin in many, many ways. Diabetes is, think of it as a systemic disease with multiple, multiple end organ effects on pretty much every organ system in your body, including the skin. Diabetics have very poor wound healing. For type two diabetics, one of the, one of the signs of 
insulin resistance on the skin is something called acanthosis nigricans. It's this velvety thickening of the skin. It happens most often on the sides of the neck, in the armpits. It can happen on your face. And you guys have you know, asked me about it before, so I'm gonna link down below in the description box my video on acanthosis nigricans if you're dealing with that. But you can imagine how improving your insulin levels, maybe through being on a ketogenic diet and getting into a ketogenic state and staying there, that you might see some improvement in that. But again, there are no studies showing that. Hyperinsulinemia and type two diabetes also comes with an increased risk or an association with skin tags, which are benign little skin growths, but they are a lot more common in people who, are, who have type two diabetes. 30% of diabetics develop diabetic dermopathy, otherwise known as shin spots. They start out as red scaly little spots on the shins and then they heal with hyperpigmentation and they stay there. They don't really go away. And it's thought to be a reflection of underlying uh, poor microvascular health. So basically the blood vessels are diseased as a result of having diabetes and you have poor wound healing. And they tend to occur on kind of bony areas like the shins. And so, you know, perhaps being on a ketogenic diet in a, in a ketogenic state may help in improving that. People with diabetes can develop really large blisters. When you're developing that type of complication as a result of your diabetes, it's a clue that you need to get your insulin in check. So you can imagine how those kind of things in the skin might improve. Diabetics are also at an increased risk for a variety of skin infections, fungal infections, yeast infections, and bacterial skin infections, and they already have poor healing. So those skin infections can be very complicated and lead to significant morbidity in diabetics. Granuloma annulare, comment below on if you have that. There is a generalized form of that. It's a skin condition where you get these little annular plaques you can have just one, but in diabetics, there is an association with that disease and getting those little plaques all over the place. It's called generalized granuloma annulare, and it is seen in association with insulin resistance and diabetes. So that's another one where, you know, we could scratch our heads and say, hey, I wonder if a ketogenic diet might help these people out who are coping with this and have, have type two diabetes. What about an anti-aging effect? That's kind of what she's claiming here. And in terms of the skin, I've talked to you guys before about how uh, a high glycemic load diet, a diet that is rich in processed sugary foods, negatively affects the collagen in our skin by generating something called advanced glycation end products. Basically the sugar gloms onto the collagen. This process not only damages the collagen and elastin in your skin, leading to wrinkles, loss of elasticity and snap, but it impairs repair, the repair processes in the skin that heal damaged collagen. And so having a, a diet that is rich in processed sugary foods, the way the food is prepared is another you know, indicator of the burden of advanced glycation end products that the foods will lead to when consumed, you know, as part of your diet. Now, one thing that often goes hand in hand with type two diabetes, although not always, but can, and a lot of skin issues as well is obesity. Many people who are obese develop type two diabetes and weight loss can help in reversing that. So there is some thought that putting people on a ketogenic diet may help them if they are obese with weight loss because it can be a form of calorie restriction depending on how it's executed. Some people claim that they feel more, they achieve satiety on fewer calories following a ketogenic diet. So it helps them in weight loss, which will help with markers of inflammation and will help with these disease processes Weight loss will help with the metabolic complications, namely type two diabetes and all of these skin issues that I have outlined. Not to mention, it will also help with their cardiovascular health as well. Now, while robust clinical trials on the skin benefits of a ketogenic diet are lacking, we do have two fairly recent small studies looking at a ketogenic diet for an inflammatory skin condition, psoriasis. There was recently a single arm open label study in 37 overweight patients with psoriasis. Now psoriasis, everybody always thinks of as a skin disease, but it's actually a systemic disease that happens to have skin lesions. People with psoriasis can go on to develop diabetes and they also can develop uh, cardiovascular complications 
And for whatever reason, many people with psoriasis have comorbid obesity uh, as part of their disease. And we don't know if it's that being obese worsens the psoriasis or having psoriasis makes it harder for you to lose weight, more likely to be obese. We don't really know. Anyways, these patients, they were put on a ketogenic weight loss protocol and they had a decrease in something called the psoriasis area severity index. It's kind of a measure used in clinical studies of psoriasis to see did, did the psoriasis get better or not. And it, it, you know, there was a statistical difference, but whether or not that was due to calorie, uh, being on a calorie restricted diet or something specific to the keto diet itself, we can't say from this study. Um, because when it comes to weight loss, it is, a, it is a thermodynamic process. Weight loss boils down to either reducing what you put in or increasing what you put out. And so this, they put these people on a keto diet, but they, they put these people on a calorie deficit, so they lost weight. And as a result, they saw an improvement in their psoriasis. And then there was another study in 30 patients with psoriasis on a low calorie keto diet. They lost weight and had an improvement in their psoriasis. There was a 10% weight loss in that study, and they also showed that there was a decrease in inflammatory markers. But you can get that by being in a calorie deficit. So it's, these studies, you know, they're interesting, but they don't get at really how being in a ketogenic state benefits psoriasis. I mean, it doesn't answer that. These studies don't answer that. A lot of people will claim that it's anti-inflammatory. Um, and there's, you know, mechanistically that makes sense, but we really don't have good studies looking at large groups of people to show big drops in inflammatory markers when being on, the, on this diet. Why? Like my arguments with the vegan diet that Natalie Portman made, <laughs> you know, keto is, is a metabolic state. How you get there is a macronutrient profile, but you can be eating a certain way. Uh, is it whole foods or is it the processed junk that you can now buy in the store that is labeled keto? Now that the keto diet is so popular, I mean, there's keto this, keto that, keto ice cream, keto the, you know, and so once you start going down the processed keto foods, are you really getting the benefits? It's hard to say. When you're in a ketogenic state, your body, you have ketones in the blood and ketones are actually anti-inflammatory. They are potent activators of something called a nuclear factor erythroid two, uh, factor two pathway. And this pathway, because ketones activate this, it leads to an increase in something called glutathione, which is a antioxidant in our body, in our cells, that helps us fight off oxidative stress and reduces inflammation. Ketones stimulate pathways that lead to more glutathione production. Another thing about the ketogenic diet is it does allow for broccoli consumption, which is rich in sulforaphane. Sulforaphane activates this pathway as well. So you can get some of these benefits by eating broccoli. And then ketones are effectively used by that little organelle, the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. So this may lead to a reduction in reactive oxygen species and less overall oxidative stress that would ultimately damage proteins, DNA, in our skin cells and lead to more, you know, accelerate the rate of aging. So the anti-aging claim that she's making here, mechanistically, it makes sense, honestly, that it might have some anti-aging effect. But again, we don't have large clinical studies. The ketone beta-hydroxybutyrate, it can reduce um, something called interleukin-1 beta, a cytokine that is at the heart of a lot of these inflammatory diseases. So that particular ketone is directly associated with a reduction in IL-1 independent of weight. So therein you, you, know, you, you start to have an intriguing, compelling argument for the ketogenic diet for having skin benefits. But again, we don't have like actual studies on people that are large enough to draw that kind of conclusion. Now, being on a ketogenic diet and in a ketogenic state, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> there are some problems that can arise. If you've ever gone on a ketogenic diet, you know that initially it can be quite miserable. People go through something called the keto flu. Uh, you're, it takes time for your body to adapt to this, and you can be, you know, it, it's, it can be quite taxing on the body. As far as the skin, when you're getting used to a keto diet, you can develop something called pyrigopigmentosa. It is uncomfortable. It is an itchy, scaly rash 
that, you know, we don't know why people who start a keto diet develop this, but that can happen. And like I said with the vegan diet, it's all on how you execute it. Because of the way this diet is structured, you need to supplement. Uh, potassium, most keto people on keto diets are taking some kind of electrolyte supplement, so you do need to supplement, and micronutrient deficiencies can happen. If you're involved in endurance sports like distance running, your performance may suffer on a ketogenic diet. All right, what about her claims that like her brain fog and all of that got better? You know, it's hard to say because she does have a history of diabetes and we don't know anything about where she was at in her, in her glycemic gl control. How, you know, was she well controlled? Uh, because honestly, if you are a, a diet, if you're a diabetic and these parameters are out of control, you have a high, what's called in, um, uh, hemoglobin A1C, all these things, they're gonna affect how you feel for sure. Uh, having having high, chronically elevated levels of insulin and, and glucose will make you feel like stink. So improving that through your diet, lowering insulin, lowering insulin-like growth factor, yeah, you're gonna feel better. Um, she claims that it, it helped her migraines. You know, I'm not going to say that if you have migraines, go on a keto diet. I'm not a neurologist, so I haven't reviewed the neurology literature there. But um, I would I would seriously question if it's you know maybe there was something else in her life that was triggering her migraines. Maybe her sleep got better on a keto diet because you know she's feeling better. But who knows, you guys? Who knows what exactly is going on? So as with any any diet enthusiast out there touting the benefits of a diet, take it with a grain of salt. In the case of keto, you do need to take it with a grain of salt because uh, that's you know you need your electrolytes. Well, here's why we need more research. It, it likely would benefit some people, namely those you know perhaps with diabetes or other metabolic issues. But if you're otherwise healthy, uh, is this a diet that? is necessary, is going to be as beneficial for you. Well, if it ends up stressing the body out too much because of your lifestyle, maybe it's, you know, ends up getting you micronutrient deficiencies, well then no. The risk in that case would outweigh any potential benefit. That's where we need more research before we can just go recommending a keto diet. When people are like, go keto, go keto, go keto, it's like, <laughs> some people will ben may benefit from it if executed properly. Um, for their health, but whether or not it's sustainable for the long term, that's hard to say as well. Fat does tend to be more satiating, so you may feel fuller on fewer calories with this diet. Because it may be more satiating to you, you may end up losing weight, and that might not be a good thing for you. Um, so definitely, as with any of these diets, definitely see your healthcare provider. Don't just follow somebody on YouTube who is, you know, sharing their keto journey or whatever. I mean, make sure that you talk to your physician, see a, a registered dietitian, make sure this is right for you. Another thing I will point out about this diet, especially in the beginning, that I never hear people talk about, you do have to be very careful if you are on medications because the diet, um, especially when you're transitioning and your body is getting used to it, what ends up happening is you lose a lot of water. That is why people experience so much weight loss in the first few weeks. They're losing a lot of water because glycogen, carbohydrate, the storage form of carbohydrates, it holds water. So you lose a lot of water. And that shift in fluids in your body can affect the distribution of me medications. So don't just jump on the diet without talking to your doctor because it could potentially impact the volume of distribution of medications that you're on, and that might need some tweaking, following as you transition on this diet. All right, you guys, that's what I can tell you about Halle Berry's claims of the ketogenic diet and its anti-aging benefits that she has observed in herself. Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite Halle Berry movie? For me, it is Monsters Ball. I love that movie. In fact, I'm gonna see if it's on Amazon Prime because I, I could watch that movie again. Anyways, I digress. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.